Hi everyone, welcome to HKR Trainings YouTube channel. In today's session, we will discuss Looker interview question and answers. Before we begin, I would like to address the agenda. Firstly, we will discuss Looker beginner interview question and answers, followed by intermediate Looker interview question and answers, and then finally conclude the session with experienced Looker interview question and answers. I hope the agenda is clear. If you like our videos, please do not forget to subscribe and definitely press the bell icon to never miss an update from our YouTube channel. Businesses are searching for relationships between data sets to reveal valuable insights. Taking advantage of the best features of each data set is a business dream. The new and unexpected patterns obtained from the analysis of data can help businesses find new solutions to complex problems. Looker helps enterprises in building relationships in their data and getting insights out of it. Let's get started with Looker Beginner's interview question and answers. First question is what is business intelligence? Organizations, small and large, carry out several processes or transactions which will result in generating humongous data. The data holds valuable information that could help improve business. That's where the business intelligent tools comes into the picture and help us explore data in meaningful ways. Processing the data in time and proper reporting enhances the ability to make more informed and data driven decisions. And this is what exactly business intelligence provides us. The next question is explain the term SSIS. The full form of SSIS is SQL Server Integration Service. It is basically a component of the Microsoft SQL Server database and is used to build workflows for data migration tasks. It is an extract, transform and load tool that extracts data from different sources, transforms it and loads it in a different destination. In the next question, we're going to understand what are the different kinds of data flows. There are basically three categories in the data flow. The first one is sources. The sources can be Excel files, flat files, XML files, relational databases, and much more. The transformations, on the other hand, is the filter data based on some calculations, changing the form of the data, etc. The third type of data flow is destinations. The destinations can be Excel files, flat files, PDF files, XML files, relational databases, and much more. The fourth question is, what is the Looker program and explain some of its benefits? Looker is simply a cloud-based business intelligence software that helps in exploring and analyzing data. We can combine data from various sources and create a unified view and then build real-time analytics on top of the data and share them very easily. It offers great visualizations and drill-down dashboards. Some of the benefits of the Looker program is data management, integrations, and document management. Moving on to the fifth question, which one among the following is better? File system deployment and SQL server deployment. The SQL server deployment is much more preferred when compared to the file system deployment. This is because the processing time in SQL server deployment is much faster, so it gives quicker results. It also won't compromise the safety of the data. The sixth question, what are the cache modes of Looker? There are three modes available in Looker. Full cache mode, partial cache mode, and no cache mode. In the full cache mode, all the values will be cached. Whereas the partial cache mode, only the distinct values will be cached. And by the name, you can say that in the no cache mode, no data will be cached. The seventh question, explain the term drilling in data analysis. Drill down is a capability provided by most business intelligence tools. It helps in viewing the data in detailed manner and gives in-depth insights. You can drill down on a component in a report or a dashboard to get more granular details of it. Next is what is a LookML? LookML is Looker's language to describe aggregates, dimensions, calculations, and data relationships in SQL database. LookML constructs a model which Looker then utilizes to create SQL queries to retrieve the precise data you need for your business research. Next, describe native derived tables. The native derived tables is defined in the LookML. We can create a native derived table by specifying the explore parameter on the base table with desired columns. The LookML dimensions or measures in your model are used to build your native derived table columns. Now let's move on to the last question of this part. 
To write epiphermal derived tables, does Looker require access to the scratch schema? No, we don't have to set up a scratch schema. For the MySQL family of databases, we need to perform some additional setup to allow epiphermal derived tables. Moving on to the next part of the session, we will discuss Looker intermediate interview question and answers. The first question here is what is pivoting? Looking at data in multiple dimension makes it easy to consume the data visually. To change the dimensions, we can use the pivot option that turns a dimension into a particular column. We can only change the pivoted dimensions order by changing the sort order. Next question is explain user flow analysis by heap in Looker. Heap captures user behavior like clicks, tabs, gestures and more across various websites and applications automatically. It allows data enrichment with custom APIs. This will help in analyzing user actions and present them visually. The third question is what are the important steps of an analytics project? The first step is the exploration of data. The second step is defining problems and solutions for the data. The third step is tracking and implementation of data. The fourth involves data modeling. The fifth involves data validation. And the last step is data preparation. The fourth question is list a few tools that you can deploy for data analysis. The most commonly used tools are RapidMiner, Node Excel, Wolfram Alpha, Nine, Solver, Tabulo, as well as Fusion Tables by Google. The fifth question is, what is the difference between no cache mode with partial cache mode? Now, upon adding the new rows, the SSIS starts analyzing the database. The rows are only allowed to enter if they match with the existing data. And sometimes it creates issues when the rows come instantly one by one. On the other hand, the no cache mode is a situation when the rows are not generally cached. Users can customize this mode to their requirement and can allow the rows to be cached. However, this happens one by one and thus consumes a lot of time. And as you can see in the partial cache mode, it creates issues when the rows come instantly one by one. It's very overwhelming. The next question is, what is OLAP? OLAP is a strategy that is used for arranging multidimensional data. Although the prime goal is analyzing data, the applications can also be manipulated in case the need for the same is realized. The full form of OLAP is online analytical processing. The next question, what is logistic regression? Logistic regression is a process of detailed verification of the data set that integrates unbiased. The verification level relies on how exactly the final results rely on these variables. It is not constantly clean to modify them once specified. The eighth question is, is package deployment in SSIS? In SSIS, we have a file tagged as a manifest file. In fact, it should run along with the operation. It always assures reliable or authorized information for the containers and without any policy violation. Users can deploy the same in the file system or into the SQL server according to the allocation or requirements. The ninth question is, what are the differences between DTS and SSIS? This is fairly an important question. SSIS can handle a lot of errors irrespective of the complexity, size and source. On the other hand, the error handling capacity of DTS is limited. There is actually no business intelligent functionality in the DTS, while SSIS allows full business intelligence integration. SSIS comes with an excellent development wizard. The same is absent in the case of DTS. When it comes to transformation, the DTS cannot compete with SSIS. SSIS supports .NET scripting, while the DTS support X scripting. The last question of this part of the session is, what is the use of SQL Runner? SQL Runner provides direct access to our databases and endorses its access in different methods. SQL Runner explores and creates queries. In the last part of today's session, we will be discussing Looker experience interview question and answers. The first question is, what are the Looker blocks? Looker blocks are the pre-built pieces of LookML code that accelerate analytics. We can use these Looker blocks and customize them to your specifications. They really enable building quick and flexible analytics. And the second question, can we use templated filters in PDTs? Using templated filters is not usually recommended. The table will be rebuilt every time the filter changes and it causes a lot of strain on the database. In the third question, 
why are copies of tables created in the same PDT of a database? So when you change that SQL of a derived table and query it, a new copy of the table is built in the PDT. The table copies only get created when the SQL in development mode is different from the production mode. In the fourth question, does the sort order matter when using an offset list function? The sort order is very important when using an offset list function. It defines whether to go up the table or down the table. Moving on to the fifth question, can we base a table calculation on a particular pivoted column? Yes, we can base a table calculation on a particular pivoted column using the pivot underscore where function. The column given for the pivot underscore where field specifies that it should be targeted for calculation. The sixth question is, what are the requirements for using custom visualization? You should enable the sandbox custom visualization labs feature in the admin panel, install the custom JavaScript visualization in the visualizations page, and also ensure that you have the latest version of the Chromium render. The eighth question is, what data is included in table calculations? Table calculations run after the query is returned. They operate on the data in the explore table. The ninth question is, which container of the package is enabled for data logging to a package log? Every container task is enabled for data logging, but they should be allowed in the initial stage of the operation itself. The last question is, name the types of looker blocks. As you can see, there's six types of looker blocks. The first one is analytic blocks. The second one is source blocks. The third one is data blocks. The fourth one is whiz blocks. The fifth one is data tools. And the last one is embedded blocks. With this, we come to the end of today's session. I hope you had a great time on understanding the important questions for the looker interview. and. If you like this video, do not forget to subscribe to our channel and do not forget to hit the like button. If you want to know more about HKR trainings sessions, do not forget to visit our website, the description box below.